40 years of looking at mainly Latin American countries, what is very clear is that a necessary condition for investment in countries is macroeconomic stability. Uh, it's not sufficient, as we've also found out, and that's why you know, in many of the countries that have gone beyond just stability and getting investment, they've gone into the more micro side, and certainly PPPs are a very prominent part of that. But we've seen a bit of a slippage uh, in macroeconomic stability worldwide, especially after the crisis. And certainly, uh, the Caribbean has been hit very hard when you have most of the economies here uh, linked to tourism and financial services. Uh, sort of seemed like it might have been diversified, but it really wasn't. They've been both hit very hard uh, by this crisis, uh, and especially in the movement away from uh, commodities-based type economies. Certainly, the Latin American countries re recovered very quickly because of or at least in part, they had uh, a rather strong commodity side uh, to their economy. And that's not the case here. Um, the way I've described a number of the economies in, in, in the Caribbean is the following. The photograph looks a lot better than the movie. Uh, in other words, if you take a number of the countries that I'm going to talk about right now, so I'm going to talk about the Bahamas, Aruba, Bermuda, Cayman Islands, and, T and Trinidad and Tobago, if you take a snapshot of them, with the exception of the Bahamas, and I'll come back to that in a moment, uh, you look at them in a, in a cross-section or at any point in time, the photograph looks pretty good in terms of credit worthiness, in terms of the structure of the economy, et cetera. Uh, and in, in terms of uh, policy, however, and the dynamics, it hasn't looked so great in a number of these. Uh, in terms of the Caribbean, you've seen uh, fiscal slippage, okay, and also slippage on the current account, and the economies tend to be very dependent upon imports. Uh, and then the question is, how do you become solvent again? Or if you're slipping, slipping on uh, the fiscal side with larger deficits and larger debt to GDP, et cetera, especially if you're in tr of the mind of, going, of helping uh, infrastructure investment through PPPs and some type of government investment uh, in those areas, you really have to get the fiscal pace, uh, space to do that. And we've seen a lot of this play out in Europe, this idea that austerity, versus I don't know what. Uh, I think uh, it, in many ways the discussion is way off course in that there's some other alternative to austerity when you're faced with a serious debt situation, especially the government side. Uh, and in fact, how you go overcome that uh, is, is very important. Now again, the Caribbean countries, and specifically the Bahamas, are constrained by their structure. How do you get enough revenue, for example, to uh, finance the type of public sector that you want. Uh, in many cases, since they're offshore and uh, you have offshore financial services and tourism, the main sources of revenue tend to uh, be very mobile. They can go elsewhere if you overtax them. And this is a very large constraint. The other thing is uh, on the expenditure side, most of the, the inheritance of the colonial era is a very heavy civil servant structure. What we found, my own work in Latin America, which, you know, I did the econometrics later with a, an ex-colleague of mine at the Federal Reserve, very clearly show that tightening fiscal policy actually leads to higher, higher growth. Alberto Alessina did the same thing for G7 countries and found two very interesting things, is that not only is austerity uh, good for growth in many cases, you can actually avoid uh, a recession by being austere, or at least you lay the framework for future growth. But how you do it matters. If you increase taxes, typically the austerity fails in the adjusting fiscal accounts, uh, and you don't grow, you have a recession. If you cut expenditure, especially transfers, you tend to be more, much more successful. The success rate is much higher, uh, and you tend to maybe not even have a recession, uh, go the other way. So the prospects for the Bahamas, and also the IMF is in accordance with this, and perhaps the IMF is being a bit sanguine, is that the growth in the Bahamas will continue to be rather good, uh, and the fiscal side should show a rather significant rebound uh, in the next two years or so. Uh, and that means there's clearly, clearly laying the framework, uh, a macroeconomic framework for an increase in investment beyond just one or two projects, certainly if the microeconomic side uh, follows. So unlike uh, the other four investment grade, uh, which where the photograph is better than the movie, I would say the movie here is uh, better than the photograph, and things look uh, pretty good for the next couple of years, especially if the government sticks to uh, trying to restructure and try to come up with more viable investment projects in the future. 
Thank you very much.